Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep. Welcome to our daily quiz. First, let me wish everyone a very happy new year. And on this occasion, we are launching a host of new initiatives on our YouTube channel to ensure that it becomes a one-stop solution for your current affairs to help you thoroughly prepare for the UPSC Civil Services examination. Starting today, the daily Hindu analysis goes live every day at 10 a.m. in the morning along with new initiatives such as Polity This Week, Science and Environment Fortnightly, etc. which are all set to begin very soon. So do ensure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and as well as to our official Telegram channel in order to get regular access to these current affairs initiatives. So let's start with the first question. Which of the following statements are correct? Eco-sensitive zones or ESZs find a legal basis under the Environment Protection Act of 1986. Madhav Gadgil Committee and Kasturi Rangan Committee dealt with the implementation of eco-sensitive zones. The Supreme Court has directed that every protected forest, national park and wildlife sanctuary across the country should have a mandatory eco-sensitive zone of a minimum of one kilometer starting from their demarcated boundaries. See, the topic of eco-sensitive zones is in news because we have a related article in today's The Hindu newspaper. Eco-sensitive zones have been contemplated as a buffer zone around protected areas in order to protect fragile ecosystems under the National Wildlife Action Plan and they find a legal backing under the Environment Protection Act of 1986. So in order to provide for the establishment of these eco-sensitive zones, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change had established the Western Ghats Ecology Expert Panel, which was headed by environmental expert Madhav Gadgil, to recommend the implementation of eco-sensitive zones in and around the Western Ghats. This committee, which was established in 2010, would submit its report a few years later, but it would trigger a major controversy because the implementation of eco-sensitive zones would result in limiting economic and human activities in these areas and thereby led to widespread protests across the Western Ghat states led by the governments, the industry and also by the local people. Following this, the government established the Kasturi Rangan Committee to review the recommendations of the Madhav Gadgil report and ever since the implementation of eco-sensitive zones has remained pending. Recently, the Supreme Court of India stepped in and has mandated the establishment of eco-sensitive zones across protected areas in the country for a minimum of one kilometer from the demarcated forest boundaries. So following this, the state of Kerala has taken the initial steps to provide for the establishment of these eco-sensitive zones as mandated by the Supreme Court and field verification exercises have begun, which is again triggering controversies at the state level. So based on this understanding, we can say that all the three given statements are correct and hence option D is the right answer. Now let's look at the second question. Which of the following best describes the term deep fakes? Is it fake news deeply implanted in media and social media platforms or hidden information found on the deep web that enables illicit activities or digital media that is manipulated using AI or artificial intelligence to create hyper-realistic digital falsification or none of the above. See, the Hindu carries a detailed article on deep fakes and it essentially refers to AI manipulated digital media, which is essentially audio video images, which can be manipulated using artificial intelligence in order to create hyper realistic false visuals, audio clippings and images. These deep fakes do have certain applications in areas such as education, film production, criminal forensics, etc. At the same time, this powerful technology can be easily misused to create hyper-realistic false content that could help in spreading fake news and propaganda. Through AI algorithms, it is possible to create completely false images, audio files and visuals, which could have very serious and devastating consequences if misused. So based on this understanding, we can easily say that option C is the correct answer. Now let's take a look at the third question. It is a natural deep water port on the east coast of India located at the confluence of the Mahanadi River and the Bay of Bengal. It recently clocked the highest ever monthly cargo throughput in the history of all major ports in the country. Which port does the description refer to? 
is it the Vishakapatnam port or Paradeep port or Haldia port or the Kakinada port? The correct answer is option B. The description given here matches the Paradi port in Odessa. See, according to this press release from the Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways, the Paradi port has clocked the highest monthly cargo volume for any major port in the country. In the month of December, it has handled more than 12.6 million metric tons of cargo, thus establishing the strategic and economic significance of the Paradi port. This major port of India is located in Odessa along the east coast of India at the confluence of the Mahanadi River and the Bay of Bengal. In this map, you can also see the other major and intermediate seaports of India, including major ports such as the Kandla port in Gujarat, the JNPT located near Mumbai, the Panaji port in Goa, Mangaluru port in Karnataka, Tutikorin in Tamil Nadu, Chennai again in Tamil Nadu, then Vishakapatnam in Andhra Pradesh and Paradip in Odisha and Haldia near Kolkata. The Paradi port in particular happens to be a natural deep water port that offers India vital connections towards Southeast Asian markets. It is also important to note that it is located to the north of Konark and Puri, which are important historical cultural sites, and it is located to the south of Chandipur, which is home to DRDO's missile testing range facility which is located at the APG Abdul Kalam Islands off the coast of Chandipur. Now coming to the fourth question, which of the following statements are incorrect? The Indian Science Congress, the annual gathering of researchers in India, is organized by the Indian Institute of Science. It is the brainchild initiative of two British chemists, Professor J. L. Simonson and Professor P. S. McMohan. The first gathering of the Indian Science Congress was held in 1914 at the Asiatic Society in Calcutta. Amongst the given statements, the first statement is incorrect because the Indian Science Congress is organized every year by the Indian Science Congress Association, which is headquartered at Kolkata. This organization functions as a part of the Department of Science and Technology. And since 1914, the association has been hosting the Indian Science Congress. This was a brainchild initiative of two British chemists during the colonial period, that is Professor Simonson and Professor P.S. McMohan. The first such gathering was held in 1914 at the Asiatic Society in Calcutta and ever since, the Congress has been held every year, which provides an opportunity for researchers, scientists and scientific organizations across the country to come together to take stock of India's scientific progress. So the correct answer is option A, one only. This topic is in news because according to this press release from the Ministry of Science and Technology, the 108th edition of Indian Science Congress shall be inaugurated tomorrow by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The theme for this year's event is Science and Technology for Sustainable Development with Women Empowerment. Now let's take a question from the 2020 prelims paper. The experiment will employ a trio of spacecraft flying in formation in the shape of equilateral triangle that has sides of 1 million kilometers long with lasers shining between the craft. The experiment in question refers to Voyager 2, New Horizons, LISA Pathfinder or Evolved LISA. The correct answer here is option D, Evolved LISA. See, Evolved LISA is an ambitious project led by European Space Agency, which is hoping to establish the first fully functional gravitational wave detector in outer space. This ambitious project will employ three spacecrafts flying in a triangular formation with each side measuring more than 1 million kilometers and will use highly sensitive laser beams to detect the disturbances caused by gravitational waves. As a prelude to this project, the European Space Agency had launched LISA Pathfinder, which is a pilot initiative to establish this technology as a proof of concept mission. So the correct answer is option D, Evolved LISA. Now coming to the fact of the day, Let's look at this important article in today's The Hindu that refers to an important agreement that has been signed between India and Austria. The two countries have signed a migration and mobility agreement that will enable the easy movement of Indian workers and professionals to Austria and will also help Austria curb any illegal migration from India. See, Europe in general serves as a major labor market for Indian workers and Indian professionals. And particularly, the flow of Indian migrant workers has increased to Austria in the last few years, 
and in many cases indians have been entering austria as illegal migrants so to curb this illegal migration into austria and to enable the legal flow of indian migrant workers to austria the two countries have agreed to sign the migration and mobility agreement which will enable the easy grant of multiple entry visas to indian professionals and workers who are trying to enter the country legally while helping austria regulate the flow of illegal migrants into the country india is in the process of negotiating similar agreements with other european countries as well and these issues related to migrant workers also dominate the ongoing free trade agreement negotiations between india and the european union on this note i would like to conclude my discussion and if you found the initiative to be helpful do support us by liking the video share your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel